Good day, everybody, and welcome to this segment of High Heap, brought to you by Liberty Mutual. Nice to have with us Christopher Russo, Moses, and Mitch Green, of course, and uh, we got a nice conversation going with Indian General Manager Mike Chernoff. Mike, how are you today? We're doing great here, yep. And I love the drive that you and your dad, dad, of course, and radio executive in New York. You've had these catches since you were six years of age. This year, you had to be a little creative. You met halfway between Cleveland and Jersey. Tell us about that right out of the gate. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, over the years. So we've had a, a catch once a month, every month, since I was six years old. Uh, so about 32 years, almost 33 years now doing it. We've had some crazy ones. Layovers where we meet at an airport uh, <laughs> or, you know, do something at like 1150 at night on the last day of a month. This probably ranks up there as the top one, though. So my dad's in Jersey. I'm in Cleveland. We each drove three and a half hours and met at a rest stop in the middle of Pennsylvania at our catch with our gloves and masks on and then headed back the other three and a half hours. It, it was fun to do it. How long is the catch last for? About 20 minutes? Yeah, we did it for about 20 or 30 minutes this time. And thankfully, we can throw more than six feet so we could stay socially distanced the entire well, time. I, fast, and you picked an equal distance place, exactly three and a half from each... Uh each city, each home locale? That's right, it worked out perfectly. We got there about five minutes, uh, I got there about five minutes before he did and it worked out great. Yeah. Unbelievable, I love that, Mike McCarroll, New York Post. Okay, where do you stand right now? And let's do communications first. I'm sure you've communicated with your Indian players. Seems like there's some maneuverability here until uh, mid-June uh, training camp. I'm not gonna get too specific on that, but I know you've communicated with your Indian players. Mike, what have you told them? Let me hear. Yeah, so I mean, the entire time we've, we've tried to stay really tightly connected with our players and staff, um, you know, first and foremost for health and safety reasons. So we've been connecting with guys nearly daily just to check in on them, make sure that they have the resources they need from a health and safety standpoint. Um, as time has gone on, that has shifted more towards preparation. We want to be prepared and ready for whenever that date comes. And we recognize that when that date comes, it's going to come quickly. Right? There's not going to be a huge time to build up. So we want our players to be ready and prepared. Um, we had a call with them recently, uh, earlier this week, just to sort of talk through the dynamics of that, where they should be in their programs, and, and hopefully at least get them focused on the potential optimism of maybe get a, getting started. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's going to be, as you said, a short and spring training, and away we go. Service time is interesting, too, especially with you and Lindor. He gets to service time. I only have the extra year now in 2021. How does that affect, if at all, negotiations, where he stands long-term, even a trade? Let me get some thoughts on that. Go ahead. You know, those are things that we don't even, we're not, are not even on our mind at this point. I mean, there's a, an entire freeze on all transactions, contract negotiations, things like that. We've been so focused on the immediate future of how do we make sure our, our players and staff are healthy, prepared, connected with each other in this build-up time so that if we do get on the field, we can take advantage of that. I think we're all hopeful that we could potentially help rally the community, rally the country around baseball if we do get back on the field. And that's really been our entire focus. All right, uh, for the past so we, couple of months. I, I got that. Now, how about uh, pitchers and everything else? You know, you have like Carrasco and, you know, obviously you got a young pitching staff that you got to keep healthy. You're not going to be able to go seven innings, uh, you know, first game of the season if we're so fortunate. You know, how are you going to handle that young pitching that the Indians have? Let me hear yeah, I think that's one of the challenges of this. I mean, it's, you know, you're essentially trying to conduct what would be a spring training, but you're doing it remotely with each guy in a different place. So in Carrasco's case, he's actually in Cleveland. He's, he's continued his rehab. Um, so he's one of just, you know, one or two players that we have that's doing some rehab. For our other, our other guys, we're trying to remotely program with them and think through how do they best accomplish the routines they would typically have in a spring training to stay in good enough shape so that once we get to a season, they're ready to go. And maybe it's not a full seven innings on their first outing, but they're ready, hopefully, with the right intensity level to be able to contribute at least. Yeah, it'd be fascinating. And the experimentation is going to be good, too. You know that, Michael? You're going to have a lot of things that are going to be a little different in 2020, whether it's seven inning ball games, guys at second base in the tenth inning to break the log jam with a six hour game, whether it's, uh, you know, pitch clock. There is going to be some wrinkles in, in 2020. 20. This is the year to do it. You have to get adapt. Players have to get adapted to that. Let me hear your take there. Yeah, and actually that was one of the messages that, uh, that Tito had when we talked to our players recently. It was about making sure that we, we think 
about being flexible and adapting to whatever the circumstances are, right? Whether we have fans in the ballpark or no fans in the ballpark, or whether we are playing in one site versus another site or travel or whatever those things look like, we can't be the team complaining about that. We have to be the team that's energized by it and that takes advantage of that. So, you know, I think one of our big points to our players was we've got to remain adaptable and just take advantage of the circumstances, whatever they are. It's a little unclear of uh, if spring training is going to be back in Arizona, if you're going to have it in your home ballpark. Any sense if you do have a spring training sometime in June where that could be? I think, I mean, you know, Major League Baseball has been exploring all sorts of potential options. We're in favor of that. I mean, look, there's so many different dynamics at play here, and I think nobody has certainty on what different things could come into play over time. So the more options that are explored, the more alternatives that we potentially have, the better. Um, in the end, it's really not on us. Our, our job is to adapt to whatever circumstances we're given. Um, and so we're getting prepared for any scenario that it could be. But, you know, and frankly, I'm glad that they're looking at a lot of different options because I think the dynamics could change, you know, week to week, or even if we look up in a month and there is hope on the horizon, um, it could look very different than what it looks like today. Uh, one last thing, Mike, and it's an interesting scenario here. You know, the Indians have been a sort of a marathon-oriented team in a regular season. Sometimes you get up to a little bit of a slow start. And then the, the grind of the year, the way Francona handles it, depth of pitching. Last year is a perfect example. You played great in the second half of a season, and all of a sudden you're right in the mix. This year it's going to be more of a sprint aspect to a season, more so than a marathon. How does the franchise adapt to that? Let me hear yeah, we figure we just skip the first half and jump right into the second <laughs> half, right? Right. No, I think, you know, that th those are the sorts of things that um, we rely on Tito for. He is so good at, at rallying the guys, at, get them, at, at getting them um, to really think about that one mission and get them to rally behind that. You know, we have players that uh, care so deeply about trying to rally our community that I think there's going to be a lot of energy whenever we do get out there. I'm not worried about slow starts, quick starts, anything like that. We're worried about how do we safely and in a healthy way get back on the field and make sure we're prepared to take advantage of that whenever that comes. Uh, when is the next catch planned between you and your dad? It's got to be sometime in May. We'll have to figure out a time in May. We actually thought about doing it. Could we do it like at midnight on April 30th and get two months in at one time? But we felt like that was a little too crazy. So we'll, we'll find a way to get it in today. Don't worry. Good job, Michael. Well done. We'll keep in touch. Uh, good luck to you. Stay healthy. Thanks for a few minutes here today. Thanks. Same to you, Chris. You got it with uh, Mike Chernoff, runs the Indians, their general manager. Nice to have you with us. And Mitch Green, of course, and Moses, uh, superb job. Liberty Mutual. Uh, we'll continue these little vignettes as we move along here in the month of May. Stay safe. Have a good weekend. And we'll see you in a couple of days. Adios.